Many of you have been asking what's the cost of living in Australia, especially now that inflation is on the rise. And this is, of course, something that's happening globally. A disclaimer, though, your cost of living will vary according to different factors, such as your lifestyle, whether you are a single couple or a family, as well as where you live. In line with all our cost of living videos, we're going to start with the average salary in Australia to put all these costs into context. The average weekly ordinary time earnings for full-time workers in Australia are around $1,800. And another thing that I need to clarify is that all costs given in this video are in Australian dollars. Okay, let's get started. According to Finder and Compare the Market, the average Australian household, which is comprised of two to three people, spends between 800 and 864 Australian dollars on grocery bills per month. But yeah, let me know about your experience. Now, I have a tip for you. If you're planning to move to Australia and of course you're not here in the country and you want to estimate your potential cost of living, I highly recommend jumping on the Woolworths or Coles websites. These are the major Australian supermarkets and basically you can create your own card and see how much will you be spending basically. So you just click on the items that you usually buy, your typical grocery shopping per week for example, and yeah, you can estimate basically your average uh, weekly spending doing that. Now, if the case is that you're already in Australia and you want to lower your grocery bills, something that I always recommend doing is cooking at home. Of course, this is of course a no-brainer. Buying discounted products, I usually wait for sales or you can go to discount supermarket chains like Aldi, for example, or even going to your local farmer market. For example, here in Melbourne, one of the most popular markets is the Queen Victoria market. Of course, these are very obvious things to know, but well, it's um, a tip. And if you want more tips on how to live tip in a Australia, I have a dedicated video about that, so I highly recommend watching. Now let's talk about housing. The median weekly rent in Australia is around 577 Australian dollars and 603 in capital cities. This sounds like a lot, but of course it depends on where you live, including your state, suburb and the type of property. And remember that the closer you live to the city or to the beach, the more expensive rent will be. Okay, now in terms of renting, a one bedroom apartment in an inner city suburb like St Kilda in Melbourne for example may cost you around $370 per week. Having said that rent costs in a one-bedroom apartment in an inner city suburb in Sydney for example in Surrey Hills will be more than $590 per week. So as you can see, these prices are not consistent across Australia, but they may vary according to the state or even the suburb. Now, a two bedroom apartment in an inner city suburb like St Kilda may cost you around 500 Australian dollars per week. Whereas in Sydney, this may cost you $850 per week. It's pretty expensive. Now, if you're a family, you're probably going to be looking at renting a house. So a three bedroom house in an inner city suburb like St Kilda will be around 850 Australian dollars per week. However, if you go to areas that are further from the city, in outer suburbs, a three-bedroom house may cost you around $470 per week or $500 per week. Now, a low-cost option when it comes to renting is to live in a shared house. So if you're new to Australia and you don't have any issues sharing a house, for example, hiring a room for yourself or even sharing a room with someone else, you can use this website called flatmates.com.au. I found this to be the best site to find share accommodation. If you have any other alternatives, leave a comment below. Now let's talk about utilities. Something that you should know is that here in Australia, we usually pay bills like water, electricity, gas on a quarterly basis. So for example, the average quarterly bill for water across Australia is 208 Australian dollars. At the same time, they found that for a one person household, the average quarterly bill was 158 Australian dollars. For a two-person household, 209 Australian dollars, and for a four-person household, 232 Australian dollars. In my case, I pay between 180 and 220 dollars. Now, electricity. According to Finder, the average quarterly bill for electricity in Australia is 317 Australian dollars. But they found that for households with two children, this number goes up to 395 Australian dollars. Now, for a two-person household, for example, in my case, living with my partner, we pay around 200. 30 Australian dollars for electricity on a quarterly basis, which is around 77 Australian dollars per month. Now, gas, the average quarterly costs 
for gas in Australia are 181 Australian dollars. And for a household with no kids, this is 178 Australian dollars quarterly. And for a household with two kids, it's around 244 Australian dollars. Now, internet. I personally pay around $70 per month for internet, and this is consistent with the average internet bills across Australia. Also, this is a fixed rate, so it doesn't matter how many people live in your house. Now, I have a tip for you. Something that you can do to save on internet bills is to use your mobile data and hotspot it. This way, you don't have to pay for Wi-Fi. Just make sure that you get a plan with enough mobile data so you can do this. But of course, this is not feasible for everyone. For example, in my case, I do this when I travel, but otherwise, I do rely on a good internet connection, so I'm willing to pay for Wi-Fi. Now, speaking of mobile plans, I was personally paying around $48 per month, and then this provider started increasing the prices every month to the point where it got to $62 and for me that wasn't worth it again because I do use internet I mainly work from home so because of this I basically switched to a much cheaper company and now I pay around 30 Australian dollars per month so make sure that you do your research especially if you don't rely on your phone data that much because you have a lot of saving potential there now considering this you can expect to pay between 30 to 60 dollars or even more depending on your plan on your on your phone now transportation the most exciting topic According to Finder, the average weekly cost for using public transport in Australia is 46 Australian dollars per week, which is around $200 monthly. Now, the same analysis by Funder found that in terms of car costs, Australians spend on average per week 66 Australian dollars on fuel, which is equivalent to 286 Australian dollars per month. But these costs do not include toll roads, parking, and car insurance. Now, an interesting fact that this analysis found is that many Australians are considering alternative forms of transport to cut down on their fuel costs. They found that 25% of Australians are walking more frequently, 14% are taking public transport more frequently and 5% are riding their bike more frequently. And I do agree with that. If you want to cut on your car costs, perhaps taking public transport or cycling or even using e-scooters could be amazing alternatives. Now, healthcare. The costs of GP consultations in Australia usually differ according to how long your consultation is and whether your GP offers bulk billing or Medicare rebates. So for example, in my case, a standard 20 minute consultation with my GP costs around 108 Australian dollars and I get a Medicare rebate of almost $40. But again, this depends on the GP, the duration of your consultation, and whether you have Medicare or private health insurance, etc. If you want to know more about the Australian healthcare system, I have a dedicated video. Now, dentist. I go to the dentist at least twice a year, and I pay more than 279 Australian dollars for a cleaning. Last time, it was last week, and I paid 295 Australian dollars. So it's very expensive. And these costs are consistent with the Australian Dental Association, which estimates that the average cost for a dental consultation in Australia is 219 Australian dollars. But they clarify that dental costs will vary from dentist to dentist. So. Now, if you want to have a full treatment or, for example, orthodontics, like wearing braces or for your kids, this cost will go up and you can expect to pay thousands of dollars for that. Now, education. Your education costs, again, will vary according to your location, to the institute or university that you go to, your level of study, whether it is a certificate for or a bachelor degree or a master's, and of course, whether you are an international student or a local student. So if you're planning to do a TAFE course, again, this could be a certificate for or a diploma, advanced diploma, you can expect to pay between 4,000 to 15,000 Australian dollars per semester. Now, in terms of university fees, if you're planning to undertake a university degree, such as a bachelor degree, master's, etc., you can expect to pay between 20,000 Australian dollars to 50,000 Australian dollars per year. And a bonus tip, if you want to estimate your course fees, the website Study Australia has an amazing course finder. You can use all the filters there, find your course or a course according to your discipline, etc., and they're going to give you an estimate of the typical course fees. Now, if you're coming to Australia and you have children and you're planning to send them to school, something that you should know is that primary and secondary school fees 
in Australia are influenced not only by the state where you live, but also by factors such as whether the school is located in a metropolitan or regional area, or whether the school is a state government or Catholic or private independent school. I have a dedicated video about the Australian school system, so I highly recommend watching that. Now, according to the latest reports, sending your child to a government primary school, for example, in the state of Victoria, will cost you around 368 Australian dollars in school fees per year plus 6725 Australian dollars in extra costs such as uniforms electric devices like an iPad or transport and general school activities so this is a total of 7,000 Australian dollars per year. And this is a state government school. Now, if you're sending your kid to an independent private school, you can expect to pay more than 17,372 Australian dollars per year. Now for childcare fees, if you have to send your kid to a childcare center, according to the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, average childcare fees in Australia are around 123 Australian dollars per day. Now, entertainment and recreation costs. So if you want to go to a normal gym, according to Canstar Blue, Australians spend on average 81 Australian dollars per month on gym memberships. In my case, I go to a rock climbing gym and I pay around 120 Australian dollars per month on my membership. So it all depends on the kind of activity and type of gym that you go to. Now, if you want to look after your health and do exercise, but you don't have the financial means to actually afford a gym membership, something that you can do is to go hiking, cycling. You can get a secondhand bicycle on Facebook Marketplace, for example. You can join meetup groups which are free and at the same time meet people. You can also join a university club for example. Usually these require only a very very small annual fee so that's an alternative as well. Now if you want to send your kids to extracurricular activities such as swimming lessons you can expect to pay around $100 per month. And I mention swimming lessons because most of my friends who have kids, they usually send their kids to swimming school at a very young age. And if you think about it, it does make sense considering that knowing how to swim here in Australia is very important. Now let's talk about other extra costs that you may want to consider. If you want to go to the hairdresser and get a trim and you have long hair, you can expect to pay around 150 Australian dollars. On the other hand, if you have short hair, you can expect to pay between 40 and 60 Australian dollars. But of course, again, everything will depend on where you live, your location and the hairdresser. In my case, I do pay more than 150 Australian dollars and I do think it's pretty expensive, at least when you compare it to um, other countries. Now, in terms of eating out, a meal for two at a cheap restaurant without a drink will cost you around 40 Australian dollars. But if you do include drinks, this might go up to 50 Australian dollars or even more. Something that you should know is that water in Australia is free so if you go to a restaurant you're always going to have tap water in your table you don't have to pay any extra costs for that. Now for lunch I usually pay between 17 Australian dollars and 22 Australian dollars. This is just for a normal lunch meal at a food court. Now having dinner here in Australia at a high-end restaurant may cost you more than 70 Australian dollars per person. But again, this all depends on the restaurant that you go to and what you order. In terms of clothing and homeware, prices will vary according to what you want, your taste and basically where you shop. But if you're on a budget, I highly recommend going to op shops or secondhand stores. You're likely to find high quality clothing and furniture items at a much more affordable price. And this is of course a more sustainable way of buying. Another option for secondhand items items is to check out Facebook Marketplace, especially for furniture. Another option, if you're looking for new clothing but at an affordable price, you can check out stores such as Kmart, TK Maxx, and for furniture you can check out stores such as Ikea, etc. Now, if you want to watch more videos like this about living in Australia or even what is it like to work here in Australia or even tips on how to live cheaper here, I highly recommend watching these videos here and here. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe to keep supporting the channel so I can keep bringing more content for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!